from its questionable origin to presidents pardoning the bird? Stay tuned to number one to find out the true history of Thanksgiving. Number 10. The First Thanksgiving If I say the words the first Thanksgiving to you, then you likely get an image of pilgrims and Native Americans dining together across a long table and enjoying their time together. Usually history exaggerates what actually happens in key moments, but believe it or not, this one was accurate. Even if we don't know the exact details of what's going on or where it happened, the widely held belief about the first Thanksgiving was that it was held between the colonists and the Wampanoag Indians when they shared an autumn harvest feast in Plymouth, Massachusetts in 1621. That's where the picture is said to be based on. However, there is some debate over whether this is actually true. There are some historians who believe that the first Thanksgiving didn't happen in Massachusetts, but rather in Florida. And it wasn't the colonists who had this mill. Rather, it was the Spanish. You see, in 1565, nearly 60 years before Plymouth, a Spanish fleet came ashore and planted a cross in the sandy beaches to christen the new settlement of St. Augustine. They decided to celebrate their arrival with a feast, a feast in which they brought in the native Tamuquan people. So technically, that could be the first Thanksgiving. Either way, the image honestly is the same in most cases. Two different peoples coming together to have a meal and enjoying everyone's company. Number 9. The First Thanksgiving Mill Okay everyone, I want you to picture your ideal Thanksgiving meal. Lunch or dinner, doesn't matter. What do you see in front of you? The turkey all golden brown and juicy? The mashed potatoes that you're savoring and will drench with butter? All of the flavors of pies, pumpkin, apple, cherry, or more? And washing it all down with juice, soda, or something stronger? It's good that you're enjoying that now, because that is hardly a traditional Thanksgiving Day meal. Surely it's traditional in the modern sense, by how humanity has perceived Thanksgiving. But if we're talking about the original Thanksgiving, the meal wasn't even close to that. In terms of turkey, it's true there were turkeys in the colonies, but it wasn't something everyone would eat. And there's no official record stating that turkeys were even on the menu. But that doesn't mean that there wasn't meat. Deer was hunted by the Native Americans and likely brought in for the feast. Also, whether in Florida or Massachusetts, seafood would have been big on the menu, maybe including fish or lobster. Potatoes? Not so much. While trade had been going on, potatoes weren't in great numbers in the colonies and likely weren't used in the original feast. Still, it's fine if you don't go fully traditional. Go and enjoy what your family brings you. Number 8. When did the government acknowledge Thanksgiving? Before we answer this question, take a moment to like this video and join the Zero to Hero community by using the buttons below. That's a question that's a little tricky to answer, because when it comes to the official holiday of Thanksgiving, it was given ratification, of sorts, by the government of the US and their leaders more times than you might think. Sometimes it was given a singular day of thanks, ones that would acknowledge or honor a momentous occasion or a victory. According to the History Channel, America first called for a national day of thanksgiving to celebrate victory over the British in the Battle of Saratoga. In 1789, George Washington again called for a national day of thanks on the last Thursday of November in 1777 to commemorate the end of the Revolutionary War and the ratification of the Constitution. And during the Civil War, both the Confederacy and the Union issued Thanksgiving Day proclamations following major victories. So yeah, you could honestly say that Thanksgiving has been a big deal for many parts of early colonial history. Even then though, some presidents like Thomas Jefferson actually opposed the holiday because they thought it would set a religious precedent of sorts. Either way, the idea of giving thanks is very much ingrained in American culture. Number 7. Who made it officially official, though? All right, so if you're wondering which president made Thanksgiving an annual holiday, then you would have to go to Abraham Lincoln, which is very poetic if we can be honest with one another here. He officially called for an annual day of Thanksgiving back in 1863, which means the holiday is basically 256 years old. But here's the catch. 
While it was Lincoln who helped make it official, it wasn't Lincoln's idea, per se, to make it happen. That credit would actually go to Sarah Josepha Hell, who was the author behind the popular nursery rhyme, Mary Had a Little Lamb. She believed so wholeheartedly in the idea of Thanksgiving that she wrote editorials and articles for three decades trying to get it created. Sure enough, she succeeded, thus giving her the title of the Mother of Thanksgiving. Number 6. The Birth of Pumpkin Pie Okay, so we acknowledge that having pie on Thanksgiving is very much a more modern thing that is put on the table, right? Well, modern enough, I would say. The first true recordings of pumpkin pie, the usual traditional pie for the holiday, came via New England in the 18th century, which, if you recall, was before it was a national holiday. That's because it was a regional holiday before then, and New England loved to celebrate it. Eventually, the pie was put into the tradition of Thanksgiving Day dinner. So much so that, in 1705, it was stated that the Connecticut town of Colchester famously postponed its Thanksgiving for a week because there wasn't enough molasses available to make the pumpkin pie. Can you imagine that? Delaying a holiday for a single piece of pie? Guess some people love that pie more than the holiday itself. If you want to look for one of the original recipes for pumpkin pie, you need to look at Amelia Simmons' pioneering 1796 American cookery. She had not one, but two different recipes for the pie, and one of them is very close to the standard version that is made today. Number 5. Thanksgiving Gave Birth to the TV Dinner Yeah, I'm sure you're scratching your heads on this one, because on the surface that doesn't make any sense. How is it that one of the grandest traditions in regards to food would give birth to arguably one of the lowest qualities of food via the TV dinner? It doesn't compute, right? Well, like many things, it started with a mistake. In this case, a big turkey mistake. What happened was that Swanson & Sons in 1953 had an employee who grossly overestimated what was needed for their Thanksgiving dinner. As a result, the company had a whopping 260 extra turkeys that they didn't know what to do with. However, a salesman at the company had an idea. They ordered 5,000 aluminum trays, cooked the bird in a way that would fit the trays in a minor manner, and then had people fill the rest of the trays with other food. Thus, the TV tray dinner was born, and it was a hit. In just one year after this happened, they had sold 10 million tray dinners. Happy accidents, right? Number 4. Football and Thanksgiving If you think about the many traditions that partake on Thanksgiving, one of the more unique ones in certain contexts is that there are always football games on Thanksgiving. Specifically, there are NFL games. But it didn't start out that way. The first football game to be played on Thanksgiving was actually between two college football teams specifically Yale and Princeton, back in 1876. Then eventually, the college football games started to have their championships on Thanksgiving to draw in more people. This led to a rush of other key games being played on Thanksgiving to entice people to listen and watch. The NFL didn't come into play until the 1900s, and two teams, the Detroit Lions and the Dallas Cowboys, worked out a deal to make their teams a staple on Thanksgiving Day. Now, every year, many families will pile around the TV in order to watch football as they eat food. Number 3. Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade The Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade is one of the most fun traditions in all of Thanksgiving, as people love seeing the floats, the celebrities, and more to start off their day of thanks. However, when the tradition started, it wasn't about the day of thanks, but rather the day of gifts. This happened in 1924. Macy's had just done a successful expansion of one of their superstores, and they decided to celebrate with a Christmas parade, two weeks before Thanksgiving. The parade was a success, and the team at Macy's signed a deal with NBC to make it more broadcast across the nation. Thus, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade was born. Number 2. Who Pardoned the Bird? In terms of the most odd Thanksgiving Day traditions, one of them has to be the pardoning of the Thanksgiving Day turkey, meaning it would be freed from the fate that would likely be given to it. Yet, how this started is a bit more unique than you might think. You see, in the 1940s, some farmers decided to gift the president with a turkey to honor him and the first family on the holiday. 
The president and staff would happily eat it as a sign of respect to the farmers. However, when John F. Kennedy was president, he decided to spare the bird, stating, We'll just let this one grow. JFK quipped in 1963, It's our Thanksgiving present to him. A great joke, but one that took hold 36 years later when George H.W. Bush decided to officially pardon a turkey. A tradition that now holds firm with the presidents, the turkey is given a little place to live in for the day before being returned to the wild. Number 1. The Most Delicious Holiday of the Year Come on, you know it's true. One of the reasons people love Thanksgiving is the very simple fact that most times when you celebrate it, you're with your family and your extended family. And what does every family love to do when they come together? They like to eat. The turkey, the potatoes, the pies of virtually every single flavor imaginable, it's a lot to process, both in terms of your mind and in terms of your body. Fun fact, the two times of the year where people are most likely to gain weight are Christmas and Thanksgiving, because it's almost a tradition to go and eat like a horse because you're with family and celebrating the time you get to spend together. Hey, I'm not judging. I like to pig out as well, if the mill is right. And I like to make the turkey myself so that I know I'm getting what I want. But even after Thanksgiving, you have leftovers that need to be cleared out, so it all adds up in the end. Don't be shy. Dig in. You deserve it, and your family wants to give thanks on Thanksgiving. What do you think about the traditions of this holiday? Let us know in the comments below, and take care!